I'll go back to so what we were doing back in chapter 7 and show you something that comes up here. Back in chapter 7, we were doing work external total is changing kinetic energy. Okay? Remember, this was called the work energy theorem. And some problems, instead of solving it the Newton's method, we were solving it with this method in this chapter. Now, with our new knowledge of uh, potential energy and conservative forces, we can break this equation down into its uh, components. Work external total, we can say work by uh, work uh, by. Uh, uh, I'm going to break this down into uh, work external plus work by gravity plus work by uh, spring plus work by friction equals change in kinetic energy. So in chapter 7, when we do the work energy theorem, we have, we take all the work done on an object, and then we set it called change in kinetic energy. But if we split this work into its components, work external, that means the work external would be an example of, let's say, that, remember the problem we did, the force of the engine? The car was going up the hill, and the engine is doing work on it as it's going up. So external work would be something like that, where somebody is dragging something or, or, uh, or uh, the engine is uh, causing it to go up. So that's work external. Work of gravity is if gravity is doing work on it. Work of spring and work of friction. And then we have change in kinetic energy. So then what we can do is we can split this up into uh, work external plus work of friction. equals to, and then we can take both of these to the other side. Change of kinetic energy minus work of spring, work of gravity. Now why, do I, why, why are we going through this trouble of just rewriting the equation when we already know how to use that equation? Mr. K, you're like killing us. There's no reason to do this. OK? Why am I doing this? Why am I splitting gravity and spring and putting it on the other side? It has to do with something I just finished talking about. What did I finish talking about? Starts with the letter C. Conservative forces. Is gravity and spring a conservative force? Yes. How do you know it's a conservative force? Well, what's the equation for gravity? What's the general equation for the equation of gravity? Minus mg j hat, right? Does it? fit the description of conservative force that I gave at the beginning of chapter 8. Is the y component of gravity, does it have any x dependence? Is there any x here? No. Is there any y dependence? Is there a y? So, even better. The gravity is constant. So is it a conservative force? Yes. Okay. And what is its associated potential energy function? How would I find the associated potential energy function of gravity? Well, use the fact that every conservative force is the negative, the derivative of the potential energy function associated with it, right? So if force of gravity is negative du dy gravity, and the reason I put y is because it only has a y component, how would I find the associated uh, potential energy of uh, gravity? Well, I put here f gravity is negative mg, 
and then I show for du dy, I have uh, du dy, negative du dy equals negative mg, and uh, two negatives cancel, and u is equal to mgy. Now, because when you integrate this, right, this one goes to the other side, and then you're just integrating a constant function. So the potential energy associated with gravity is the integral of gravity, which is just mgy. This is the famous equation that everybody, we all use. Potential energy is mgh, right? So that comes from this, which comes from this, which comes from this, which comes from this, right? So now you're seeing the real foundation of that equation. And then uh, the other spring force, uh, the, the spring force is uh, negative kx i hat, right? This is the lab that we did last week. The spring force is also conservative force because the x component of the force only depends on x. No y dependence. So again, it fits the description of conservative force. And to find its associated potential energy function, you set negative du dx equals to negative kx, and then cancel the negatives, and then uh, take the dx to this side, integrate both sides, and then u equals to half kx squared. Okay, so the associated potential energy with spring is half kx squared. So the reason, therefore, I, coming back to here, the reason, therefore, I took the work of gravity, brought it to this side, and took the work of friction, I mean, took the work of uh, spring, brought it to this side, is because now I can write this as Work of gravity is equal to what? It's equal to, uh, remember, the, for a conservative force, the conservative force is negative du dx, right? So when you want to find the work due to a conservative force, it's the integral of f conservative times dx. And you have here um, f conservative is equal to negative du dx times dx. And then the dx and the dx cancel. So the work due to a conservative force is negative the change in potential energy associated with that force, you see? So remember how I told you at the beginning that uh, Based on calculus, we could have either chosen the positive option or the negative option. But the reason we chose the negative is because uh, work due to a conservative force, because of this negative, is equal to negative change in potential energy of the uh, associated with that force. And then when I take this negative and I put it with this over here, look what's going to happen now. When I put work of gravity is negative change of potential energy of gravity minus, if I put work of spring is negative change of potential energy of spring. So if I put here negative and there negative, look, the two negatives become plus, And that's why we have chosen the negative option is because we want uh, these two negatives to cancel give you positive and positive, and now we're left with we can now assimilate both of this and say work of external forces plus work of friction is equal to change in total energy. Okay, because now I can add kinetic plus potential of gravity plus potential of spring, and I get total energy of the, of the object, where total energy is defined as kinetic plus potential. You see? Now, if, I, if, if the physicist had defined the work conservative, the force conservative as plus, then this would have been plus, this would have been plus, this would have been plus, 